Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. The most luminous electromagnetic event known to occur in the heavens is the gamma ray burst. For many years, scientists have claimed that most gamma ray bursts occur when stars run out of nuclear fuel, then collapse to form a black hole, neutron star, or a quark star. However, a recently detected gamma ray burst has left astronomers openly baffled. Most gamma ray bursts are thought to be seen in the so-called early universe, and even those of a long duration are believed to only last from a few seconds to a few minutes. However, astronomers were astonished to discover that the gamma ray burst 1304-27a lasted for an unprecedented 20 hours at a distance of just 3.8 billion light years from Earth. Astrophysicist Charles Dermer states, Some of our theories are just going down the drain. This is hard to explain with our current models. What does the electric universe tell us about the nature of gamma ray bursts? It's not really surprising, you know, that this kind of thing is happening because the theory of how stars are formed, what they are composed of, and their internal structure is over 100 years old. And it hasn't been seriously revised because the basic ideas have remained the same for a century. The standard view of high-energy radiation is based on either the collapse of a massive star, the subsequent explosion, and then the collision of material from the exploding star with stationary matter surrounding the star. None of these methods are what we would consider useful in engineering or in medicine, for instance, where if we want to produce high-energy radiation for medical x-rays or for industrial x-rays, we simply use an electrical discharge, and that can be done very easily and very controllably. Astronomers have limited themselves by assuming that gravity is the only force in action here, either in the collapse of a star or the subsequent explosion. In fact, it's been admitted just a few months earlier that how a star explodes is not explained. So what we have here is conjecture and assumptions piled upon assumptions, and now it's all falling apart and it's taken 46 years for this to happen. It was Hans Alfvén, the Nobel Prize winner in plasma physics and also the father of plasma cosmology, who pointed out decades ago that astronomers were missing something basic in the form of what he called double layers, electrical double layers, which are formed when an electric current flows through a plasma. He said that these double layers should be classified as interstellar objects and intergalactic objects because they radiate energy like a star can and they radiate radio noise. In other words, they are the sources of high energy radiation. But since astronomers have ignored what Alfvén had to say, when he pointed out that their theories of plasma physics and what's going on in space is incorrect, the theories that the astronomers have restricted themselves to are now struggling and the anomalies are coming in. While scientists have been unable to simulate a supernova explosion in a supercomputer using the standard model, the electrical interpretation of supernovae might more easily explain these intense electromagnetic emissions in deep space. When we talk about high energy explosions in space, the most regular and spectacular ones, of course, are supernovae explosions. And yet it has been admitted that supernovae explosions cannot be explained by current theory. In the standard theory, the nuclear reactions in the core fizzle out once there is a preponderance of heavy elements in the core, which are unable to be converted into heavier elements and release energy. At that point, it's assumed that the shutoff is rather sudden and then the outer regions of the star which is supported by the radiant energy from this nuclear explosion going on in the center suddenly collapse and in the process of collapse there is a rebound and there's a production of vast amounts of neutrinos which streak out from the center of the star and are registered on earth particularly in this regard with supernova 1987a when the neutrinos are actually registered from that supernova now, the whole theory is extremely complex, and it's based on ideas which have never been proven, particularly the idea that matter can be compressed beyond all normal states to become super dense. 
and in fact in a neutron star where the atoms collapse themselves to form neutrons. The electrons join with the protons in the nucleus to form pure neutron material. Now there's no real evidence that this can be done. However, it's assumed simply on the basis that some stars send out pulses of radiation which are interpreted as the end product of the supernova and an object which is super dense and rotates extremely rapidly and sends out a lighthouse beam of radiation to the Earth which is picked up as a pulse signal. None of this has been satisfactorily explained and there is no experimental evidence that this is the case. However, the plasma cosmologists have analysed the radiation, which is quite complex, from a supernova and have been able to explain it in terms of electrical engineering, pulsed signals in transmission lines. And they say that the signals come from a normal star where there are discharges in the magnetosphere which cause these ringing pulses to be sent out from the star. It has nothing to do with a lighthouse or a spinning supercondensed object. I think the astrophysicists continually get into trouble by postulating states of matter and also the behaviour of matter, which cannot be observed in the laboratory. The standard model of a gamma-ray burst has all of the activity centred on a star or the collapse of a star, which means that whatever happens, happens very quickly and the energy is released normally within about 30 seconds. However, the Electric Universe model has the star connected to a circuit which is gigantic compared to the size of the star. In fact, the star itself at the centre of this circuit is like a speck of dust. The circuits that feed a star can be seen in planetary nebulae. The star appears as a bright point at the neck of the hourglass. Now, when a discharge to a star reaches a certain current density, it is possible for that current to be suddenly shut off as if a switch is thrown. A good example of the sudden closing or opening of a circuit which carries a vast amount of power can be seen on Earth where the high voltage transmission lines reach a switchyard and when those switches are thrown you can see a discharge which lasts for seconds and a lot of energy, a lot of radiant energy is emitted in that process. Now if you scale that up to a stellar size of course, that discharge can last for hours. In this case, it may be that we were peering down the barrel of the hourglass, if you like, and the switch was thrown somewhere in the neck of that hourglass, and then the ripples continued for 20 hours afterwards. The fact that most gamma ray bursts appear to be of short duration, maybe only 30 seconds or so, may be due to the fact that we're looking at the hourglass, if you like, side on. It seems possible that looking down the barrel of that hourglass, the radiant energy from that outburst will be concentrated and pointed towards us over an extended period of time. The standard model of a gamma ray burst has no way of explaining a 20 hour radiant output from a collapsing star. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.